Hello, this is The Revelation File. I'm Wally Wood. Thank you for joining us today. Over the past several programs, we've been taking a deeper, closer look at who we are in Christ and what sort of people ought we to be in these last days. And so we're going to take another look at this description of who we are in Christ so that we can better understand what our role is in this world and how to how we are to respond to the things that are confronting us. And uh, keeping in mind that knowing that our identity in him determines how we walk as his. And our last time with you, we showed a, a, a number of things that uh, are identifiers in the scriptures concerning who we are in Christ, how God sees us, all right? Uh, we're beautiful, we're unique, we are loved, we're special, we're created for a purpose, we are cared for, we are lovely in his sight, we are considered precious and important, we are forgiven, and as such we are a new creation. That means that we have no past, we have no history. God forgets our sins as far as the east is from the west. We are a new creation according to uh, 2 Corinthians 5.17. We are protected, empowered, chosen. We're part of his family, the children of God. And he so declared in Isaiah 43, verse 1, you are mine. So from that perspective, we need to, as Ephesians chapter 4 says, we need to grow up. We need to become mature men to the fullness of that which is the fullness of Christ. Because as he is, so are we. I don't mean to be redundant, but again, we're bringing our attention to the way we should think, the way we should walk, the way we should respond, not react. Who we are in Christ. In our last program, we reviewed these points. We are separate and distinct. We are assured of the, the intensity of his word, the seriousness of his word, the the, uh, the faithfulness of his word. We are protected. We are part of his family. We are a people of his possession. We are alive unto our God. We are anointed. We are the apple of his eye. We are beloved. We're blessed. We have bold access to him. And we are chosen. Now, we would raise the question, why this exercise in all these scriptures? Well, as Peter said, uh, first of all, I'll remind you that David, when he was at his lowest point, he encouraged himself in the Lord his God. How did he do that? By remembering his attributes, remembering his word, remembering the history that he had with God. And Luke tells us, Go and do likewise. Encourage yourself as David encouraged himself. In 2 Peter 1, verse 12, <clears throat> we're told to keep mindful of these things. Therefore, I intend to keep on reminding you about these things, even though you already know them and are firmly established in the truth that you now have. In verse 13, he says, I think it is right to refresh your memory. Paul called preaching foolish, yet it's done. Why? Because we tend to forget. In the course of our daily lives, moment by moment, hour by hour, throughout the day, we take our minds off of him, and we focus our attention on the things of this world, and we are diverted, and uh, we are distracted. So, th hence the need to continually remind us of what we already know, to keep it fresh within us, and that in the course of time, it becomes a habit. We grow in it. We walk in it. So in this segment of who we are in Christ, we focus uh, this particular segment on he indwells us. We are his habitation. Ephesians 1.23, we are his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. Galatians 
I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ living in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Philippians 2.13 For it is God who works in you both to will and to do for his good pleasure. So he is alive in us. We are his dwelling place. He is at work within us and through us. We need to realize that. We are not our own. The scriptures declare that we are not, no man lives unto himself. No man lives unto himself, nor does he die unto himself. We are bought with a price. We belong to him. The best thing for us is to surrender and submit. And in that, we grow. We grow in our relationship with him. I live by the faith of the Son of God. That's so stated in the King James Version. In most other versions, they say faith in Christ, not the faith of Christ. You see the difference? Faith coming from Christ far exceeds my faith in him. And that's the preferred position. So, being crucified in Christ, I'm a vessel that's no longer living for himself. I'm not to be driven by my ambitions, my desires, my wishes, my hopes. Those are not to drive me. I am to be driven by my hungering and thirsting to know him more, to know him better, so I may represent him and be the fullness of him on this earth. Another attribute, we are dead to sin. Now, what does that mean? Romans 6.2 How shall we who died to sin still live in it? 1 John 3.9 Whoever has been born of God does not sin. And this is the King James Version. He does not sin. For his seed remains in him. His seed being Christ. And he cannot sin. That person cannot sin because he has been born of God. This is highly controversial throughout all kinds of theological circles. And we're not going to take the time to dive deeper into it at this moment. But this is what the Bible tells us. 1 John 2, 29. If you know that he is righteous, you also know that everyone who practices righteousness is born of him. Proverbs 12, 5. The thoughts of the righteous are right. This marks us like nothing else does. We do not give our attention to us. We are quick to apologize and repent when we do wrong, when we know that we're doing wrong. We do not plan to do wrong. That's not our lifestyle. We, are, we do not make plans to be unrighteous and to walk our own way once we've received Christ as our Lord and Savior and Master. We're dead to the concept, the reality, the fullness, the drive of sin in our lives. We are declared holy by God. 1 Corinthians 3.17 The temple of God is holy, and that is what you are. Well, you can take all day to, to meditate on that one. The temple of God is holy, and that is what you are. Colossians 3, verses 12 through 13. So as those who have been chosen of God, holy and beloved, put on a heart of compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience, bearing with one another and forgiving each other, whoever has a complaint against anyone, just as the Lord forgave you, so also should you. As disciples, we are following his lead, we are learning by his example, and he becomes the template of our lives. Colossians 3, verses 12 through 13. I hope that you're taking notes, that you're not just watching this program one time and gleaning through it. I hope you're taking these notes, these these references, 
and going back and reading them for yourself again. We are declared holy. And we'll do a program on that coming up soon as well. We are filled. We are enriched. 1 Corinthians 1, verses 4 through 7. I thank my God always concerning you for the grace of God which was given you in Christ Jesus, that in everything you were enriched in him, in all speech and all knowledge, even as the testimony concerning Christ was confirmed in you, so that you are not lacking in any gift, awaiting eagerly the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians 4, 8. You are already filled. You have already become rich. You have become kings. In the book of Revelation, chapter 1, he has made us kings and priests. That is who we are now. That's not for the future. That's who we are now. And we're to walk as such. We're to grow as such. We are to be trained as every future king is trained. The son of royalty is brought up differently than the child of the common. Everything in, in that royal child's life is calculated and is geared for his development to become a reigning king. He already has the title. It's just a matter of him growing up and becoming a wise ruler in that capacity. You are not lacking in any gift. Wow. That speaks a lot to our own self-image. This is not something that we are to be cocky about. No. We are to be humble because of this. Because it doesn't take much to go astray and to do a disservice to what he has given to us. In Second Peter chapter 1, he has given to us all things pertaining to life and godliness. Everything. So we are not lacking. Stop praying that he fill you up. You're already filled. Jesus Christ is the fullness of the Godhead bodily. If he comes into me at all, I've got his all in all and whatever portion of me I've given to him. And what remains is for me to grow so that he may increase and I might decrease. That's what it's all about. It's his program, his school. That in everything you were enriched in him, in all speech and all knowledge. Remember what Jesus said. In the day that they deliver you up, take no thought, what you shall say. You'll be given to you that very same moment by the Holy Spirit what you shall say. You have been enriched in all speech and all knowledge. That is who we are. We are his workmanship. Ephesians 2.10 For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works which God prepared beforehand so that we would walk in them. Now let me just pause here for a minute. He says, created in Christ Jesus. We are a new creation. We have been recreated. We've been born anew. Born again. Do you see what we're talking about? When we remain carnal and carnal-minded, we are children of darkness. And we have no comprehension or understanding of the fullness of the light that's being brought to us and offered to us. But when you come to Christ, you cease being the old self. I made this comment last time. We are a new creation. We have no history. Our old record has been thrown away. For us to walk as dead men, having been given life, and still allowing our past life to impact us now, we do disjustice to his crucifixion. The Bible says we crucify him afresh. 
We are created in Christ. We are, we are delivered from one world that is dying into a new creative life in Christ. This is what we this is how we encourage ourselves in times of darkness when the world is crowding in around us. We encourage ourselves daily in the Lord, remembering these things. That's why I'm taking the time to bring these things to our attention. This is who we are. Returning to the fact that we are his workmanship, Philippians 2:13. For it is God who is at work within us, both to will and to do his good pleasure. Remember that verse, Philippians 2.13. 1 Corinthians 3.9. For we are God's fellow workers. You are God's field, God's building. <laughs> wow. <laughs> it doesn't leave much wiggle room for free will, does it? <laughs> we are his fellow workers. We're working on ourselves. We're allowing him to work on ourselves through us. Isn't that weird? <laughs> Paul said, I die daily. No, he's not. Yes, he is. He's dying to the flesh. He's denying himself the right to live as he pleases. To pursue his own happiness, his own fulfillment. You are God's field. He's working us. We are his building. We are his temple. We are joint heirs with Christ. Galatians 3.29 And if you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's descendants, heirs according to the promise. Galatians 4.7 Therefore you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then an heir through God. Now let me inject something real quick here before we go on. Go back in our series, our archive, and find the section in which I spoke in terms of sons of royalty. The son of royalty is royal himself. And we've been called the sons of God. Don't take anything, don't add anything to this, don't make it more than what it is. We're not talking new age here. Jesus reminded the Sadducees and the Pharisees, does not your word declare that you are gods? He's quoting of the book of Psalms, where God himself said that. Now what does that mean? That means that we are made in the God class, after his likeness and in his image. We are the only of his creation, so made. We are the only ones in his creation in that class, not even the angels. Hebrews says, What is man that thou art mindful of him? You've made him a little lower than the angels. But if you go back and study that and <clears throat> read the lexicons in the original language, you find that apparently we can conclude that King James just didn't want him want to quote that the way that it was written. But in the original language of the Greeks, that and the Hebrews, the scripture says, you are made a little lower than God. That's a higher rank than the angels. He didn't make the angels after his image and after his likeness. God says, let us make man in our image and after our likeness. We're the only ones of that creation that, are, that occupy that class, the God class. Again, this is not New Age doctrine or dogma, or heresy. It's scripture. You are no longer a slave. You are a son. And if a son, then you are an heir through God. Titus 3.7 So that being justified by his grace, we would be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. Romans 8.16-17 now, if we are children, then we are heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ. If indeed we share in his sufferings in order that we may also share in his glory. And there's more that could be said about sharing in his sufferings. We are co-heirs with Christ 
in God of that which is coming, the, the eternity that's coming. We are his righteousness, the scriptures declare. Second Chronicles 5, 20 through 21. Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ. And I believe that we're, that's Second Corinthians, misprinted. Second Corinthians 5, 20 through 21. Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God were making his appeal through us. We implore you on behalf of Christ. Be reconciled to God. God made him who knew no sin to be sin on our behalf, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Wow. Talking about purity. That we become the righteousness of God. As you know, we are the only Jesus that the world sees. And it, we need to know the reality of this in our daily walk, whatever it is that we're doing in our careers. Isaiah 61, verse 10. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. That is how he sees us. He has covered us with the robe of righteousness. I again invite you to order your copy of Who We Are in Christ. Uh, we've no, got nowhere to even scratch the surface of what is in this document that we've prepared, in which there are 130 biblical declarations with scriptures attached on how God sees us and how he declares us to be. And it behooves us to walk in accordance and in agreement with him on who we are and how we are, so that we may align our lives according to his good measure and his good pleasure. You can write to us at inquiries at the revelation file.com. Inquiries at the revelation file.com. And as we round out the, the closing moments, here, I want to again draw our attention to something that is mentioned and, and stated here in Ephesians chapter 4, in which we're told that we are to grow up. He has laid out before us the infrastructure of the church. He's given, this is in chapter 4, beginning with verse 11. He gave us some apostles some as prophets, some as evangelists, and some as pastors and teachers for the purpose of equipping the saints for the work of service to the building up of the body of Christ until all attain to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, which is what we're talking about here, filling ourselves with the knowledge of him. To, the, to become a mature man to the measure of the stature which belongs to the fullness of Christ. A mature man to the measure of the stature which belongs to the fullness of Christ. We are to be as he is. That's why he said, take my yoke upon, upon you and learn of me. Learn me. Make Jesus your study habit. Read the scriptures for the purpose of learning him and discovering yourself. That's what it's all about. As the day gets darker, and we know it is, we're experiencing some of it right now, what Jesus said was the beginning of sorrows. It remains to, for us to discover by way of revelation, knowledge, and insight the kind of people we're to be. Because the goal is not saving the United States of America and its identity as a nation. That's not the goal. 
The goal is to establish the fullness of the kingdom of God in the hearts of men so that the rule of righteousness may prevail in the, in the fullness of the darkness that's coming. Daniel chapter 11. That in that time, those who know their God will rise up and do great exploits. What will be the nature of those exploits? Jesus said, the works I've done, you're going to do. And even greater works than I have done. I've got to get to the Father. So it remains for us to measure up to the full mature man in Christ so that we are not sidelined, discouraged, depressed, angry at the things that are going on around us. It's the kingdom that we are representing. It is the kingdom that we are walking in the fullness of. I know that this sounds like church talk to some of you, but I pray that there's fresh meat to feed on here and that I have succeeded in drawing your interest into the deeper things of Christ. I'm not ac accusing anyone of anything. I'm as involved in this as anyone else. This is part of my growing up segment, and I'm in my 70s now. But the challenges that lie ahead are going to challenge and test our position in Christ. The saints will be worn down, the scriptures declare. How do you wear down the saints? In our ignorance, in our inability to take the knowledge of God's word and to use it as a viable tool. Our weapons are not carnal, but they are mighty to the pulling down of strongholds, the strongholds of the evil ones. We will continue to talk about these things because they're important. And this is the time that God wants everybody to be on the same page, just like we were talking about just now a while ago, the building up, the strengthening of the body of Christ. I thank you so much for your, your attention, your patience, your trust. Thank you for coming back. I'm Wally Wood. We appreciate you a great deal. And we look forward to hearing from you and to sit before you again in our next show. Thank you. You have been watching the Revelation File Report with Wally Wood, a Wally Wood Ministries production from Houston, Texas. You are able to support the ministry by donating at wallywoodministries.com and by mail at Wally Wood Ministries, P.O. Box 42005, Houston, Texas 77242. Wally is available to present full two-hour forms in your city called the Revelation File News Forum. For more details, contact Andy Valdez at 713-560-3348 or by email at andy at andyvalidez.com. The Revelation File News Report is a weekly update of global trends in the news as it aligns with end-time Bible prophecy. Tune in again next time, and be sure to like and share this channel.